Hi everyone, I'm Jane. I live in Rochdale, in, which is a town in the north of the UK. And um, I took action for Just Stop Oil. Um, and since I took action, some of my friends have said to me, oh, you are brave. Well, I can tell you I am not brave. I am an ordinary person. I, I, am, I am driven by fear. I'm terrified. I'm angry. I am determined and I am guilty. I feel guilty that I've contributed to this. And I'm outraged that we've got into this situation and our government and other governments around the world have done nothing to get us out of this mess. They're actually making it worse. And they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. They know the signs and they're still doing it. And to me, that is genocide. And it's a really strong word, but what else can you call it when somebody deliberately does things that they know will result in billions of deaths, billions of deaths. Read the IPCC reports if you don't believe me. So I am not brave, I am desperate, and I, I am terrified. And a few years ago, I read a report, and I, I, I wasn't really very climate conscious, I'm afraid, but I came across a report on the internet, and it was about how many animals and insects that were really, really common when I was a kid are now endangered in this country. And it made me realize the amount of nature degradation and loss we've had just in my lifetime and that it's getting worse. And that, that is what prompted me to start reading and researching and finding out about the climate and nature emergency that we're in, because you can't rely on the media because they're not telling us what we need to know. You've got to go looking for this stuff. And so I did go looking. And when I looked, I was horrified and everything I read made me read more and I became more and more horrified. And I looked up Extinction Rebellion and I joined my local group and I've taken action with them. But when, when Insulate Britain came along, I thought I got to take it to the next level. Um, unfortunately, I had some caring responsibilities and I had to think hard about my job. So I didn't take action with Insulate Britain, but I knew, I knew in my core, in my guts that it it's now the time, it's now or never, we've got to do it now. And so I decided that I would do everything I could to make it possible for me to step up. So I started talking to my friends and family and I talked to my employer. I went to see the top guy, which was really scary. And I told him that I planned to engage in civil disobedience, that I would be arrested, that it's likely I would end up with criminal convictions and why I was doing it. And I told him that according to our code of conduct, that would mean that I was out of a job. And he looked at me and he said, well, the code of conduct is up for review and I'll take account of what you've said and I'll discuss it with the board. And I can't promise anything, but personally, from my own point of view, so long as what you're doing is nonviolent, then I have no issue with it. And that was a shock, that was a surprise. And I thought, well, you know, if, if that's possible, Perhaps people are feeling it. They just they're stuck in the system and they don't know what to do about it. This is a top guy. You know, he's part of the establishment. He has a CBE, for God's sake. You know, he's not going to rock the boat, but secretly he knows I'm right. And he doesn't want to sack me because it will make him look bad. So that that empowered me to sort of think, right, I'm going to go for it now. And I went to a Just Stop Oil meeting and I signed up and I did the nonviolence training and I met the most amazing people. And then I went to some more meetings to getting to know you sort of bonding things. You know, I'm, I'm quite shy. I, I don't really like those things, but I bet even more amazing people. It, they, it's a fabulous community of people. And then I got put in a team and, and we went down to the Midlands and uh, our target was Kingsbury Oil Depot in North Warwickshire. And on the 1st of April, I was arrested for the first time in my life. I was trying to stop oil at Kingsbury Oil Depot. I spent 14 hours in a police cell and I came out and I was released on police bail. And I was given an injunction which said, if you go back to that oil terminal, you can face up to two years in prison and you can face unlimited fines. And we went back to the house and we all talked it through and we supported one another and I had a good cry. I'm, I'm really good at crying. I told you I'm, I'm not brave. And, um, and then we went back the next day and did it again. And then I went back to work and I told the big boss what I'd done. And he said, how do you feel? 
And I said, I feel at peace because I know I'm doing the right thing. And he said he was proud to know me. And I was quite touched by that because, you know, he's an important person and that, that made my ego feel good. But then I thought about it and I thought, I don't want people to be proud to know me. I want people to join me. We need people to make this work. So I want people to join me. Don't be proud to know me. Join me. I'll tell you something. I have, I have a step-grandchild. She's, she's three years old. And she's delightful, absolutely delightful. And she's really into bugs, creepy crawlies and worms at the moment. And I watch her, I look at her, the joy and the wonder on her face as she's exploring her world. And my heart breaks. What I want is in 10 years time, I want her to say to me that she's proud to know me because she knows I did everything I could to give her a future. Thank you for listening.